Hello everyone, Paul Canette here for Woodwork Web. Today we've got an interesting project. We're going to be making something called a planing sled. And this is a, a top of a project that I'm working on. It was a rough piece of maple and it was too thick. I wanted to narrow or, or make it a little bit thinner uh, and it's too big to fit in my planer and I don't want to disassemble my jointer. There's a variety of ways that we can plane these boards down and that's what we're going to do today is we're going to make a planing jig for a router. So here's the board that I've been working on and I've used one of my planes to, to make it flat but when you're using a plane you know you're really just taking off a really thin sliver each time uh, and this is uh, about an inch and a half and I want to take it down to an inch or even under an inch uh, so there's a lot of wood to be hogged off there and there's a variety of ways that we can do that if you've got somebody around a, a work, woodworking shop around uh, they've got a, sometimes they'll have a great big belt sander they can put it through sometimes they'll have a bigger planer so you can get somebody else to plane these boards down you can do it by hand with a, a plane like I started to do here. Uh, you can disassemble your joint or take the fence off your joint or a lot of jointers you can make several passes and, and do it that way. Uh, but I'm opting to, oh and there's hand planers too, electric hand planers. And I have one of those uh, but I didn't want to use it on this project. So I'm opting to make this jig to use this bit, and I'll show you a close-up of it in a second. And what's going to happen is the jig's going to, the router will sit on top of the jig with the bit facing down, and it will spin along like this and take off material. And I'll have to make several passes back and forth, um, but this is a carbide bit. Uh, and it uh, should do a, a remarkable job of taking down the, uh, the surface of this wood. Let's show you a close-up of what this bit looks like. There you can see that bit and it will be sitting in the router like that and spinning of course like that so you can see those carbide tips under there should uh, pick up the wood very nicely uh, and plane that down. So the next thing I need to do is make a jig that the router and this bit are going to be able to sit on. Now to get started I did a few things off camera because you don't need to see the detail of this. I like to try and use recycled wood as much as I can and I, at a local um, used uh, lumber yard I have actually picked up this old surface I don't know what it was before but it'll work fine for what we're doing. Now at some point I'm going to need to lift this up and put these, and I'm using some oak that I had laying around, uh, some oak chunks, and that's they're going to need to sit up like that because this board is going to need to sit up off the work. Then I need something to stabilize it on the sides, and again I've gone ahead and got some uh, just some oak, and I wanted to use oak because this needs to be really firm. You don't want it to warp and bend in the middle. So I've done that, and basically what's going to happen is the router will sit inside of that and move back and forth on this track. And so now I need to, to go ahead and start uh, fine-tuning the bits that I've cut and put this all together because the track in here needs to be the same width as this router so that it won't go back and forth. It wants to just run back and forth up and down the track. So I need to cut a slot in here. Uh, for the bit to go through and then I need to fasten all of this wood down so let's go over to the table saw, the table saw and we'll start trimming down our uh, base first of all and make it uh, a little bit narrower than what it, uh, what it is right now. Now before I get started just a quick word on safety um, first of all I've taken my guard off here uh, first of all so that you can see the cuts better but also because I'm going to be doing a drop cut and I'll show you what that is in a second. 
the other thing is make sure your blade when you're cutting on your table saw is only a quarter to a half a tooth above the material and we do that for two reasons first of all safety uh, we don't want to be losing any digits uh, and also the saw blades cut better when they're at a low angle like that and of course when you're safe when you're feeling safe wearing safety glasses and and taking your time and using um, uh, hearing aids or, or hearing uh, protection it helps you slow down and uh, take your time and make sure that you do everything safely. So I measured the fence, the fence at 15 inches uh, and I'm going to go ahead now and we'll make that first cut. Now off camera I measured the diameter of the bit and mine is two inches so I wanted to make a two and a half inch slot in the middle so that I can put the bit through and so that uh, dust and chips can come up. So in the center of the board of my base here I've actually measured out uh, and I started off making a little narrower and I realized I could go a little bit longer that's why that other mark is in there and I've actually drilled holes on all the four corners because I need to take this piece of wood out of here so so that the bit can run through that and I want to do a, a plunge cut or a drop cut depending on who you talk to what it's called and you could you, you could cut this out with a jigsaw I just like to use the table saw because it's quicker and it makes a little bit nicer cut uh, I'll have to still have to cut the ends out with a jigsaw but um, I'd like to make the length of these and I've got a uh, combination blade in here which will do uh, ripping and cutting and this wood is pretty soft so what I need to do to do to make a plunge cut I need to figure out where the start and the stop of my blade is and right there and all I want to do is make a little mark with a piece of tape and I want to bring it past that so that I leave a little bit of room for error so I don't go uh, too far beyond and I need to do the same thing on the front side where the plunge is going to be and in that case looks like I already have a mark there and that's going to be that now that tape is actually high enough that it shouldn't interfere with the wood when I'm rubbing uh, when I'm have it up against the fence now the next thing I want to do is measure from here to here and that's actually six inches and that's going to be right there and now what I'm going to do is drop that all the way down and I want to move this so that it's going to be this is going to be in line with that and that was the side there so that's where I want to bring that up I'm just going to put a little mark there and we'll do the same on this side and now what I'll do is I'll turn the saw and wind the blade up into it then push it along until this stop right here and then I'll turn the saw off, lower the blade down, move it over and do the same cut on that side and that'll give me two strips on each side then all I need to do is clean up the edges a little bit and cut across the end and that'll get that slot out of there so let's go ahead and do that
Now I'm going to move the fence over. That wants to be eight and seven eighths. And now all I need to do is finish off the ends. I'm going to do that off camera with my little jigsaw. You don't need to see that. Now the next step is to center your router, whatever router you've got, uh, in the slot on each side. And then you'll need to fasten down the rails. So that's that side. Let's move down here. And this doesn't need to be absolutely critical at this point because we're going to be putting the other bar on here in a moment uh, and that's and we need to leave a little bit of area there for it to move back and forth on just a little bit so we'll be doing that and that's going to be this is what's critical here is moving this back and forth so I'm just going to go off camera now flip this over and put uh, probably four screws in here from the from the back side so that rails fastened the next thing we want to do is fasten this one and I'm actually going to use a couple of shims here just some uh, veneers just some thin veneers on here and I'll put that there and then I'm going to clamp that and then I'll run it down the other end with the veneers and clamp that and then we'll be able to fasten that rail down as well so let's run that down this side, put those veneers in. That just gives us a little bit of wiggle room there. Okay, and I'll flip this over off camera as well, and we'll put four screws in the back of that one. And then we all have to all we have to do is attach the feet, figure out the height for the feet, uh, and we're ready to start uh, using that little jig. Now to check this, the height of the feet, I actually installed the bit on the router and you always, always, always make sure the router is unplugged when you're changing bits. Then I put it down into the, the jig to see how close I was because I still have, I can move the router up and down a little bit and I determined that the feet that I had pre-measured ahead of time were actually just fine so let's stop and take a look at this jig for a second so that's what it looks like it's a slot with two bars on either side and you notice that I made the bars on each side low enough that I can actually control the router it's not bumping up the handles are not bumping up against it so it's very easy to hang on to and that's important Underneath, there's just two feet, and that's all they, they're just fastened down. You can see the screws there that hold the two rails on top, uh, and there's the two feet. And now all, all I have to do now, and there's the wood underneath, you can see the wood underneath that I'm going to be planing down. I'm just going to be fastening this wood down and depending on the kind of workbench you have there's a variety of ways that you can fasten it down I'm just going to use some little clamps some little metal clamps and just actually screw this because this is um, a natural edge here and I'm just going to put a couple of little clamps down in this area and just hold that down and then I can just move this back and forth take a pass move it back a little bit make another pass and do the same thing until my board underneath is flat and even. So the next thing I'm going to do off camera is fasten this down and then we'll actually start and, uh, and use this jig. There's one last little detail that we need to do. We need to 
prevent this from going all the way back so we need to put a stop back there uh, on the front and the back and I'll do this side here and then I'll do the other side off camera okay we're ready to try the little jig now Okay, let's have a look at that. Oh my goodness, that does a beautiful job. I'll show you a tight shot of that so you can see that. That has really done a beautiful job. It's, it's amazingly smooth. And I just want to put a square on there. And it's almost perfect just the way it is right there. So that's great. I'm going to go ahead now and finish up that top. And there's that top. Take the jig off and a couple little pieces here and there that I can easily take off. Uh, that's amazing. I can, uh, all I need to do now is sand that down. So that's all it takes to plane a board flat. And if you've got a longer board, you could actually turn this around and, and go across the board so that you could do the whole, the whole length of it. So there's lots of ways that you could use this kind of a jig. I must say I was a bit skeptical when I got started, but I'm, I must say that this really, uh, really did a, a fine job. That bit is a very clean cutting uh, and it uh, really did a great job. So, that concludes our video on making a planing jig for your router. And uh, if you're new to us, we ask you to subscribe to this channel. We ask, ask you to go to Woodwork Web because there will be an associated article that goes along with us. And I'll probably put some dimensions on there, although the dimensions are going to depend on what your router is and what it'll take. So, I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.